anime two months after dingo's fucking dead man what, what are we doing johnson remember that time we watched that bad anime and the final part took place on deimos yeah so this is also deimos so i guess it's like around the same place maybe i think it's got science i guess yeah that's that's deimos right dude look at how much energy is going to that man's left nipple Ready? Not Damn. his heart. <laughs> just, just, just the nip. That's where you store all the energy, bro. <laughs> yeah. Where do you think all that sub energy comes from? You know, it's like the energizer rabbit, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> we'll just leave it. It's like the energizer rabbit. <laughs> oh shit! I feel like Megalovania that's, should start playing. That's a lot of nipple energy, man. Yeah. He's got a stable pulse. Thank you, you can go now. I like how he can just tell by looking at like the fucking like power aid that's flowing through his body. The power nipple. Yeah. You've been asleep for two months. Oh shit. I shaved your beard. It's kind of a creepy thing to do after a dude wakes up from a coma. <laughs> like, just like, caress his face like, by the way, I shaved you. Also, this is just a thing that I've kind of, like... This game came out, um, like a few months before MGS3, but like... I feel really Dingo suit here... By the way, sometimes just when I'm bored, I wiggle the window around. Don't mind me. Um, Alright. I feel like Dingo suit kind of reminds me of, like, something that, like, it looks like a rejected skull suit design, which is Raiden suit from MGS2. Ah, uh, I, I, I guess so, yeah. Specifically at the start when he has all the scuba gear on and shit. Like a, yeah, like a sneaking suit. Yeah. Two or something. Yeah. Oh, don't talk nonsense. Well, try it if you like. Are they gonna fuck later? What? Like, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> oh, god damn it. I mean, he he used to be a commander, in, or like a captain in Baram or some shit. He used to be something, yeah. And, and she's clearly, she is trusted with like a boss orbital frame, so, you know, they got that to bond over. Don't stand up. How could you do this to me? I had no choice. The cockpit is too small to put in all the gear needed to keep you alive. I didn't want this. I don't remember. Yeah, I love that. Like he's bleeding to death and near de like he is nearly dead and she's like, help me, and he just passes out and she's like, Well, you wanted me to let <laughs> you know. Like he had no choice. I helped you. Uh hook me up to proper vitals. Give your real body back, so you'd better just accept my orders. Don't be ridiculous. How can I follow Baram? I'm not Baram. Gasp. Quite the opposite. I'm with the space force. The fucking space force. Yeah. Sent into hiding in Baram. Are you serious? Don't be so surprised all the time. <laughs> we don't have much time, didn't I? I didn't want to do this either. First, you have to escape from Demos as soon as possible. You're in danger if we stay here wasting time talking. It's hard for a dead man to understand. You are still alive. So what? <laughs> what the fuck you mean so what? He's still alive too. Don't you want vengeance on him? He killed my comrades. So one thing with this game's localization that everyone makes fun of is it feels like there was a mandate to never use the word friend. Yeah. Ah, the dog is asking about the sports bet. Be more serious? I'm very serious. Do you know the answer? We've no time for We never find out if Hesperia Gales was the winner. <laughs> um, so Part of getting a double S rank is having 19 or less saves. So I'm going to be rotating my saves here and uh, being I'm going to be saving at very specific points, basically. Um, if, we, if we have zero saves, then we could just get the S rank. No, it, 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 you get the S rank if you get 20 saves. We're going double S rank for 19 to zero. Shit. 
unmanned machines are on patrol to attack so unlike so this game kind of honestly like this is kind of a weird comparison but like i guess a lot of people probably worked on those games uh and then worked on this um, kind of like how, like, the you go from the jump from, like, Metal Gear Solid 1 to 2, where, like, those games take place in, like, kind of, like, a bigger, like, enclosed area, where, like, you kind of have to make your way through it. And then when yeah. you jump to Metal Gear Solid 3, it's more of, like, a set-piece type thing, where you're going through a bunch of different areas. Um, that kind of is what this game feels like, where you're jumping around from place to place more so than just being in, like, a colony like the first game. And hey, the Cyclops friends are back. That's good, at least. They're not as much of a pain as they were in the first game, but they can still fuck you up if you're not careful, as you can see. They still do the punchy. Hell yep. yeah. They still do the punchy. I miss this. They also have, like, a wind punch that will knock you up, like, this will send you flying back until you hit something. <laughs> to a comical degree. Yeah, when you're spinning like that, you're pretty much invincible. Um, there's a little bit of lag time where you can be hit after that animation is done. I feel like they didn't think that through. I think I think they intended for that to be, like, a time for you to be hit, but, like, you recover so fast that it almost never happens. So, grabbing yeah. is just OP. <laughs> just grab. Just grab. Just grab and spin. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, kind of nice when these... Uh, flying enemies are nearby because it means that we can refill our sub energy very easily. Yeah, when so when Ada confirms a kill, you can use the left or right analog stick to have Dingo respond. <laughs> <laughs> I do it sometimes for funsies. Um, I will say, um, this game's difficulty curve is a little bit interesting. So the first game. It mostly just kept ramping up and getting harder and harder, as you probably remember, until we got to that fight with Viola. And then yeah. the final the final section wasn't as hard, but it was still pretty difficult. Um, yeah. This game kind of zigzags a little bit, in my opinion, especially on the harder difficulties. Um, these early areas can be a little unforgiving just because Jehuti is still lower level, and you don't have too much um, attack power or health yet. So just be careful. And yeah, if you start to do bad, Ada will give you pro tips. Thanks, Ada. What if Ada tells you to buy the DLC? There's no DLC yet. I don't know why I said that, like, kind of... I, I, I meant to say that, like, <laughs> yeah, smarmy... Th th thank you, side games, Rosenbrand. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, like, I, I feel like I started to go into, like, a weird, like, pseudo-Russian accent accidentally. <laughs> um, so, hey, uh, cellar areas can be a problem. There's a lot of shit going on here. Uh, don't yeah. just rush for the cellar all the time because that's a good way to die. Um, but you know, try to get some distance. When it expands like that, that means something's popping out. Uh, but yeah, uh, I feel like the leveling stuff is even less important in this game than it was in the first. Um, but early on, especially on the harder difficulties, it, uh, it, you you definitely feel the differences in the levels. Speak of the devil. Um, once again, like I said, like you could probably stick in an area like this with the cellar and just keep grinding out enemies until you get to like a decent level, and then just not worry about it the rest of the game if you wanted. But that's kind of boring to watch for LP yeah. purposes. we're not we're not here to grind. We're here to show off stuff. I don't yeah. fucking know, man. Um. There is a little bit, with, with the changes to the sub-gauge and the fact that projectile attacks of all types do take your sub-gauge away a little bit, there is more incentive to go melee in this game than the first. If you remember a lot of a lot of my oh shit, I need to play safe moments in the first LP were me backing off like really hardcore oh, and then just shooting, shooting a lot. All the time. Yeah, uh, but now <laughs> you can't, you're going to run out of sub-gauge pretty quick if you keep doing that. Um, and like I said, if you if you block and then you block a hit, your sub gauge takes the hit instead of your HP. Uh, you can always block. So even if you're at zero sub energy, you can you can always block. It's just that you're not going to be able to shoot or use sub weapons. Metatron is still a full heal, by the way. Uh, so I believe Zone of the Enders two 
their second runner has a weird thing where um the for the PS2 uh, releases of the game, uh, Japan and the PAL regions. Uh, a few years after the first game, or like the first version of the game came out, got a special edition that added a few more areas. I think this is an area they added. Oh. Uh, they basically they padded out the they padded out the game a little bit to include a few more rooms with enemies. It's like not super huh. noticeable, but I mean the game's pretty short as is, so it's appreciated. Yeah. Uh, but the HD collection, uh, even like the American version, uh, the HD collection uh, was based off the special edition, and now Mars is based off the special edition as well. So, did that special edition add anything else besides new levels? Or? Uh, I think it added the theater mode. I could be wrong. It, it, it added. Um, I think it added a. F it updated a few of the cinematics because it, it seems like. Not that the game was rushed, but like it, it, it seems like there was like a few like parts of cinematics where people were talking that were supposed to be something else got like uh, updated to look a little bit better. It's really yeah. minor stuff, honestly. Yeah. Um, okay. If, if all you have is the PS2 version of like the American game or whatever, you, you're not missing out on too much. Um, it might it might have added different difficulties, but I'm not entirely sure. I, actually, you know what? I know I know it did. Um, so unlike the first game where you had you had easy, normal, hard, very hard, we have very easy, easy, normal, and hard unlocked by default. Uh, very hard and then extreme uh, are both difficulty modes you unlock after beating the game once, and they're kind of intended for you to play through on New Game Plus, which is also new for this game. Uh, First game did not have new game plus. This one does. So, I yeah. assume. I assume like, what is it? It's all balanced around that, right? So it is, like, but it's still a lot easier than you would think because okay, because late new game, game plus, right? is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, just uh, <laughs> having the enemy take the hit there. Yeah, just grabbing enemies and then using them as like. A club is just feels so satisfying. Um, the most dangerous part about grabbing is that if you miss a grab, which sometimes uh, enemies, especially when they're higher levels, are really good at dashing away from your grab. Um, that you're basically that's like a free counter hit that the enemy can get. So uh, sometimes it's better still just to go for the melee attack, but you know. Yo, shoutouts to the camera in this game, because they made it cooler than one. It's really good. Um, there's only one area in the game where the camera sucks, and I will yeah. definitely point it out, and it's very- I don't even have to, it's very obvious when it becomes a problem. <laughs> but yeah, this is an incredible camera. First game had a really good camera, this is even better. Taper, can you hear me? This is... This is Henry G. So do you remember when they were talking about sports at the beginning? Space Force Henry G? Something like that. Yeah. Please One of the players' names that they were talking about was Henry, like, it was like Henry something or other. But like, he just yeah. stole his favorite athlete's name. <laughs> Please, I've got an important mission to carry out. Important mission? We are helping our friends on Mars. Who did you say you're helping? There are many people who can't escape from Vasilia after taking away the Vector Cannon. It's in all caps, so you know it's Vector important. Cannon? Vector Cannon! Vector Cannon! Need to get it. I don't know. I can order Ada to stop feeding energy to you. Yo, what? Je Jesus. Ada? Damn. <laughs> okay. I'll I love how she was so worried at the beginning when he tried to leave the cockpit. Like, no, don't do that, you'll die. And she's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you if you don't do yeah, what you I want. I ordered the robot to kill you, man. <laughs> Okay, so this. Ada, where was that message? I have a minor miracle that no one cares about, but I will talk about. But from all indications, it seemed not. So yeah, you have to go through. Th you have to travel between three different rooms and play like this process of elimination game, where he describes a little bit of info about the crate he's in, and you have to just eventually like shoot at the one that he's in. And if you if you guess wrong, enemies will spawn in, and it's a whole process, and it's kind of annoying. A lot of people don't like it. So on my practice run of the PS4 version of the game, I got it first try. Is it randomized? It's randomized. So you, you'll yeah. see. A container with a 
So he'll describe a part of the container. And I was like, oh, there's a one. First try. Both Three. both playthroughs of this game I have on the PS4 version, I guessed right first try, which is like a miracle to happen just once. But like, two playthroughs in a row? Holy shit. We, we, we solved the mystery, guys. Yeah, and like, for those of you wondering what the rest of that is like, it's like, oh, I'm in a blue container. Uh, there's like three different colors of containers, and he's like, oh, I'm in room A, because they're, they're like room A, B, C, or D. Or, sorry, just A, B, and C. So eventually you just shoot the right one. I, there's like a trophy or something for shooting, like, getting it right in less than three guesses, so... So dismal! I like how he didn't ask, he just tells us anyways. That's the one you told me about a moment ago. Yes. The Vector Cannon. Vector Cannon. It's very the Vector important cannon. to us to win. That's why I have to rescue them. You're kidding. How can you rescue them like this? It's my duty. Nonsense. It's enough you take me as far as the shooter to Mars with you. I know where my comrades are when I get to Mars. Not friends, comrades. You're asking me to carry you to the shooter. Exactly. Let's go. Dingo, take him. We'll have him guide us to the levs in Vasilia. I don't think he's that useful. Jesus, Dingo. We have to destroy Baram's military. Dog, you need the robot to stay That's alive. What do you? <laughs> I don't know, the man. Fortress? The military fortress, Almon. So remember the end of the first game where Ada's like, "Yo, I'm I'm on a suicide mission to blow up a thing called Almon." Uh, yeah. And then and then Leo's like, "No, Ada, you can't." And then the game ended. Yeah. Yeah, so we get more into it here. This is how you get sub weapons sometimes. We obtained the device driver of the sub weapon guys. Remember remember how bad the sub weapons were in the first game except for like two of them? Yeah. Almost all of them are really fucking good in this game. Support your normal attack with special effects. Use it with the So you remember Geyser a little bit, right? I, yeah, I think so. You you tossed it down and it attached to walls and shot out like pillars of lasers oh, or whatever. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. So it electrifies and stuns enemies now. If you if you manage to hit it. Uh when you on low pressure, when you when you just barely tap in R2, uh, it goes wide. If you really hold down R2, also yeah, you can you could take this guy and use him like a club. Uh, when you try to throw him though, you just let go of him. You can also heal him by bursting. Basically, all your allies that have mechs in this game, you can do this with. It's great. Nice. Uh, obviously, it, it will damage him, but you can just heal him later. <laughs> but yeah, you can just do the whole escort <laughs> mission like this. This is how you do escort missions, you know? Throw your yeah. friends. A as you would expect. Also, when they fall, they just kind of float down. But yeah, you can heal them. It'll, it costs your sub gauge to heal him, though, so it's not free. Um... As you'd expect, if you get hit too many times when you're grabbing onto something, you'll drop it. So, just keep that in mind. You can open up the map by hitting the uh, left side of the touchpad, or select in the other versions of the game. I think I show off Geyser here. Yeah, just drop him. I'll check this shit out. This is extremely useful. Uh, it, it's even pretty good on some bosses, actually. Oh. Uh, as you saw, I, I did the melee burst attack there, and it did knock the enemy into the wall, so it's not just combos that can do that. Um, some sub-weapons can also knock enemies into walls, so... Collision damage is a, is a big part of this game, which it, I like a lot, because it makes me care a lot more about where I'm positioned compared to the first game, you know? There's a bit of depth in the combat now. So yeah, that's good. just use your friend as a club and... Hell yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> is... This is what Kojima wants. Oh, you 
Oh, it's fine. Oh, cool. yeah. Nope. <laughs> I I meant to grab the Cyclops there and got really confused when I accidentally <laughs> grabbed him. <laughs> Heal him up a little bit. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, give, give him, him some, juice. some juice. Yeah, give him some juice. You know. <laughs> that boy needs some milk. <laughs> Come to mama, baby. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, so anything, these turrets or any like type of thing that's attached like this, if you destroy the thing they're attached to, like the scaffolding, it'll cause them to die automatically. Ah. Uh. So. <laughs> Shut up, taper. <laughs> Also, Phantoma is the name of, like, some of the love, like, the advanced battle loves that they're using. So, yeah, Geyser is really useful. Uh, the actual Pillars of Light, uh, do a decent amount of damage, but honestly, just, like, actually hitting them with, like, the, the actual Geyser... Like, the actual Geyser bits that you throw are what stun them. The, the actual laser parts that shoot out only do damage. Yeah. Um... But, like, just using the geyser for, um, stunning is, like, so fucking useful in this game. And, like I said, the, the added pressure sensitivity means that, hey, if there's a wide group of enemies, you can, uh, you can get a bunch of them if you just lightly tap it. Or if, uh, or if you really need to just hit a specific person like I did just there, you just go all in on mashing it super hard. <laughs> And then you can also kind of steer where you're gonna throw when you're spinning around like that, so. It's all good. Once it, much like the first game, the fastest way to move is continuously pressing, pressing dash, not just holding it down. Yeah. That's what that button is made for. Yeah, I decided to just let him go and do this properly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can still kind of do the three combo into a burst attack, if you're feeling ballsy. Leaves you a little bit open, but it's good for a lot of standard enemies. You can also still do the thing where you do a few hits and then dash away to uh, avoid counterattacks. And we leveled up again. Nice. Yay. I like how he grabs him specifically by the face. <laughs> Where else would he grab him? By like the cockpit? The, hand. the cockpit? What? There's two giant handles on the back. Nah. He could use him like a wheelbarrow if he really wanted. Why is he making that face? Don't hold me back in Mars. <laughs> the fucking balls to say that to the man. <laughs> Hey, what's Mars like now? What do you want to know? Looks like Mars, man. What do you mean? Situation? You should know. Anyway, wanna wanna rub cockpits while we're here? <laughs> Ouch. By the way, what's your mission anyway? <clears throat> oh no. Raptors. So this is a weird encounter that we're about to have because it introduces a mechanic that won't be properly explained in the game until later. Um, do you remember how the first game had, like, squad leaders? And then yeah. when you killed the squad leader, the rest of the enemies went down to, like, level one? Yeah. So that's kind of in this game where some squads have commanders that basically make the AI for the rest of the um, party that they're in go absolutely, like, super aggressive and, like, really good at dot Like, basically, it just makes the AI way better. Um, but the weird part is, is that most of the time, there's, like, a commander in the squad, but they haven't formed what they call a party yet. So you have to kill the commander before they actively form the party, or else the fight gets a lot harder. So it kind oh. of becomes, like, a... Like, you have to specifically focus on the one or you're, you're gonna be in for a bad time. And hey, look, guys are so useful for, yeah. <laughs> for crowds like that. <laughs> um, 
That one in particular, though, is weird because it seems like that party is formed just from the beginning. As you could probably tell, they were really good at dodging and shit. Um, so I don't know if this is like a special edition thing. Also, yeah, I don't know what the AI was, AI was doing there, but I'll take it. His boy, his boy was dead. That's all he could have done. Yeah, just block. Damn so yeah, there, here. there's there's a lot of reworking of mechanics and ideas from the first game to be much better. Mostly for the better. Yeah. Including. Oh shit. Multiple boss fights with Viola. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> She's like the nemesis of the entire series. I don't want to fight with Viola, even if she is AI. Dingo. Now nah, we're just gonna leave though. We're just gonna say fuck it. Stupid ass Viola. She's just like oh. Ain't gotta leave me. I don't oh well. Oh, okay, oh. okay, last, bye. Last time I went to space, I died. 